This is a video on how to write code in APL. Today I needed a program to find some information in a numeric matrix. This code is to be used in the Kakuro video found here. The matrix contains groups of zeros, and I wanted to know where such groups are preceded by a complex number. Here is a small example of matrix. It is small, but will give you an idea. There are three groups of zeros here, here, and here. The first one has a number, a complex number, to its left. So what I want is the position of the two zeros, and I want the 13. Same thing for the two zeros at the bottom. I want their position and the 4 to their left. I want the imaginary part of the complex numbers. For the vertical group, here I also want the position of the zeros, and I want the 7 in the complex number above them. Note that for horizontal groups, I want the imaginary part, and for the vertical groups, I want the real part. And only if they are positive. If the portion of the complex number I want is not positive, I don't want the group at all. So here is my solution. Puzzle is the argument. The first thing I want to do is to assign a number to each cell. So I find the shape of the matrix and generate the first n numbers in the same shape as my argument. If my shape is, for example, here 4 and 3, then inserting the product between the shapes will give me 12. And I add the 12 is the numbers from 0 to 11. So if I'm doing the shape reshape of iota, all the numbers generated by the shape, I get the number 0 to 11 in the shape of a matrix. The next thing I want to do is find the horizontal groups of zeros, so I look for where the zeros are by comparing the puzzle to zero. I then ravel this Boolean matrix to get a long vector of zeros or ones, called Z. This will help me identify where the sums are by checking where Z equals zero, and the following is a one. To understand how this works, consider the numbers that we have here. See where the zeros are? Right in the middle. We can identify them using this expression here. And if we type zeros, it tells us exactly where they are. So to find what the complex number 3J7 is, we need to know where we have a zero followed by a one, like this. So that expression tells us exactly where the complex number, or any non-zero number really, is before a group of zeros. This will tell me where the sums are in the puzzle, and by using 11 circle, I can extract the imaginary part hence the sum, or rather the number I want. To extract the cell's indices, I use partition and close a la APL2 by setting QuadML to 3. For the vertical groups, I do the same. I simply transpose the matrix of zeros and do the same thing, except that I compress on the ravel of the transpose of puzzle and that I use 9 circle instead of 11 circle to extract the real part. To extract the indices, I again use partition and close a la APL2, but this time on the transpose of the indices. In the end, I compress out any element whose sum is not positive. Et voila! This is the function I use in program solve1. But in program solve, I instead use the program find groups, because I also want to find the cells that have been done already. You don't need to understand this program here. This is a program that I use in a different video. If you really want to know more about it, have a look at this video down here. This program is very similar to the fine groups and indices program we had before. The difference is that I gather not only the indices but the contents, and adjust the sums by removing the sum of unused elements in each group. For example, if a group of four cells had a sum of 20, and two of the cells were 4 and 7, then the sum would be adjusted to 20 minus 4 plus 7 equals 9. And the indices of the two cells removed from the set. And I remove any zero from the unusable sets. Because some groups may be completely solved, and their sum now equals zero, I remove them by keeping only those whose sum is not zero. And that's it.